every single time I post an SSD video, I get tons and tons of comments telling me that I'm completely missing out on the SK Hynix drives, and then especially so the P41 Platinum, and that I should definitely test it as soon as possible because it is supposed to be better than just about anything else that is currently on the market. And to be honest, I really wanted to do it and I really tried to do it, but until now it was completely impossible to get one here in the Netherlands. So I'm finally very happy to share that I managed to get my hands on a few Hynix drives. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how this P41 Platinum performs, how it compares to some of the best performing high-end drives that you can currently get. And most of all, should you buy this drive or not? Let's begin. The P41 is a Gen 4 NVMe SSD and you can get it in three different capacities. 500 gigabytes, one terabyte and two terabytes. And I have the two terabyte version right here. There are no heatsink versions available, but as you will see later in this video, putting it under a heatsink is definitely recommended. But the most interesting part about this drive is that SK Hynix uses their own Ares controller and their own 176 layer 3D TLC NAND, which is something that very few brands can do. This drive also comes with a 2GB DRAM cache as well as a large SLC cache feature, so on paper it does look like a proper high-end drive. It also comes with a 5-year long warranty and a total bytes written rating of 1200TB for the 2TB model, which is pretty standard in this high-end segment. Both AES-256 and TCG PyWrite encryptions are supported explicitly, which is not really relevant for a lot of consumers, but if it matters to you, it is something that most other drives do not mention at all. But let's dive straight into the performance numbers and just like in every other SSD video, I'm going to start with the PCMark 10 Quick Benchmark. Now this is a very nice bundle of different tests that simulate all those simple little things we do with our PCs every single day. So working with various documents, for example, uh, looking at your vacation photos, uh, loading your games and so on. And this is a very useful benchmark to look at if you're looking for a secondary drive or an extra drive that you want to use for those simple little things. And as you can see, the P41 Platinum started out really well. The Samsung 990 Pro and the Crucial T500 are a little bit faster, as are the brand new Gen 5 drives, but the P41 Platinum is faster than all other Gen 4 SSDs in the list, including some popular options like the SN850X, the KC3000, the Fury Renegade, and so on. That being said, you shouldn't really buy these very expensive high-end drives for this very light use case. So let's move on to the full PC Mark 10 suite, uh, which is a test that simulates a bit more serious, a bit more intense, and definitely more constant use of the drive. And this is a great benchmark to look at if you're looking for a new main drive, or if you need to run some applications that can be very heavy on your SSD, uh, like in my case, uh, editing videos, for example. And I would say that this is a much more important and more relevant comparison if you're looking to buy an expensive high-end drive. And again, the P41 Platinum does really well. Compared to the other Gen 4 drives, it sits right next to the 990 Pro, and it only has the T500 ahead of it, while all other Gen 4 SSDs are anywhere from from slightly to pretty far behind. Looking at latency, we got more or less the same result. Uh, it does really well. It is just behind the Crucial T500 and it is ahead of most other Gen 4 drives, including the 990 Pro. The consistency test is not that relevant for a lot of you because it simulates a very extreme and very long multi-hour workload that most of you will probably never ever do. But it is still very good to see how a drive holds up when you really stress it for a really long period of time. And then especially so when it comes to expensive high-end drives. And here, the P41 Platinum did drop a few spots, but it still looks completely fine. It is right next to the Firecuda 530, it is ahead of the KC3000 and the WD Black SN850X, it is behind the Crucial T500 and the Fury Renegade, and it is far behind the Samsung 990 Pro. The 3 d Mark storage benchmark is another bundle of various tests uh, that simulate a lot of 
gaming related tasks, uh, things like loading games, installing your games, uh, moving game folders around, uh, recording your gameplay and so on. And obviously this is a very useful benchmark if you're looking to buy an SSD that you will mainly use for gaming. And here the P41 Platinum performs really well. The T500 is a bit ahead once again, but it is the second fastest Gen 4 SSD in the list, beating the SN850X, which was the fastest gaming drive until recently. And if we just look at the gaming results that I personally find uh, most important, uh, like loading times, installing times and updating times, it ended up scoring about 94% of the T500, which is the fastest Gen 4 drive that I've tested so far, making it yet again the second fastest drive in the list. Sequential read and write performance numbers don't really represent a real life use as well as previous benchmarks do, but it can still be a useful metric. And in sequential writes, it sits just under the technical limit of the Gen 4 slot, but it is also close enough to the top, so it really doesn't make much of a difference which drive you pick. And if we look at sequential reads, we are hitting that bandwidth limit pretty nicely, so it is much faster than Sony's recommended spec for PS5 use, which together with the gaming results and the fact that it does have DRAM cache, uh, makes this a great choice for your PlayStation 5 as well. Like most other fast SSDs on the market, the P41 Platinum can actually get really hot. Within minutes of starting the stress test, the sensor reported temperatures of over 80 and 90 degrees, which can make it slow down. But it also doesn't need that much to keep it cool. So a simple motherboard heatsink and a little bit of airflow will be more than enough to keep the temperatures closer to about 50 degrees and prevent that throttling. So just put it under the motherboard heatsink or if your motherboard doesn't have a heatsink for some reason or another, you can just buy a very basic third-party model from Amazon for just a couple of euros or dollars. And on one hand, it would be nice if SK Hynix offered an option to get a heatsink version, but on the other hand, you generally end up paying way too much for those pre-bundled heatsinks and you might as well just buy your own. So I kind of do understand their decision. That being said, I really do think they should at least mention that the drive does need a heatsink to maintain its optimal performance, which most manufacturers still don't do. So overall, I think that the SK Hynix P41 Platinum is an excellent Gen 4 SSD. It holds up well in almost every aspect, and it only dropped a little bit in that really, really extreme workload that just isn't relevant to most people. Now, I don't think it is better than everything else, like some people suggested, but it is definitely one of the top Gen 4 drives that is currently on the market. But keep in mind, Competition in this segment is very, very strong, so it needs to perform well, but it also needs to have a very competitive price. Now, right now, it is being sold for 155 euros here in the EU, which is a little bit less than the Samsung 990 Pro and the Crucial T500, and just a bit more than the SN850X or the Corsair MP600 Pro LPX. And that is an okay spot to be in, even if I think the Fury Renegade at 130 euros right now means that all drives above it should cost a bit less than they do currently. But during this Black Friday, the P41 Platinum was selling for 120 euros instead, so SK Hynix is definitely able to compete on price a bit more if they wanted to. So like I say in every SSD video so far, Prices do change all the time and you really need to keep an eye on the prices and deals in your region to see which drive makes the most sense to buy because when this drive is priced well compared to some of the other drives you've seen in my graphs today, it is definitely a great option to consider. Now that is all I have for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their Virtuoso Pro gaming headset. With its open back design and 50mm graphene drivers, it offers an excellent sound quality in games, movies, as well as music. It is very light and extremely comfortable, and you can easily adjust it to very small as well as very large heads. You can also easily replace the cables, uh, ear pads, headband, and covers, making repairs and maintenance easier than ever. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching, I really hope this video was helpful enough. If you liked it and you want to see more videos like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!